Hi there, just read this disclaimer please. Hi there guys, I'm going to go through a little, my kind of plan for the future. Um, well, I don't know, I, you'll see as it goes along, but first of all, let's just do a little bit of housekeeping. I know there's something that I need to do today. Uh, first of all, I was expecting it to kind of come off the boil from all the euphoria on Friday, but it seems to keep have kept going up. Lowland in particular seems to have bounced. Been waiting a long time for that, and I'm eight percent up now. I was I was about three percent down on that holding a while ago, well last week, probably. And GSK's bouncing back a lot as well. Wow. Okay, so this is looking good. The bit of housekeeping. Um, so just see here it says for the FTSE 250 tracker, the announcement. I've, I've written a note that the announcement will be on the 14th of December, so I should be able to find out what the dividend is going to be at the end of December for this one. So if we go to the tracker, I go to their website. Sorry, that was the wrong one. I'm on Vmid, aren't I? I've got little bookmarks for each one on the web, Vanguard's website. And you can see here. Now, quite often when I load this page, it says no dividends. But then if I just click from there back to there, it'll load up properly. It's obviously some sort of glitch that happens occasionally. So as we can see, this line is now here, wasn't a couple of days ago. Um, so the next one is on the 27th of December and it's at 202.007. So it's really annoying because you can't highlight and copy that, you have to type it out yourself. So, 202.007, it's lower. So we've got a slight reduction in the dividend there, that's the... Uh, that's the annoyance of trackers, you can't predict. 27th December, and it update my overall spreadsheet. So I delete the one from this time last year, at the beginning. Plus 0.202707, I think I might have remembered that wrong. 202.007. Two oh two double oh seven. Should have been easy to remember that, shouldn't it? So I've lost five pounds a year. Well, you know, that's the nature of trackers though. They don't care about dividends, they just if a growth company does really well, it increases the weighting of that company in the in the um in the index. It doesn't care about dividends. But it doesn't necessarily mean the overall performance will be any worse. It just means that you've got more growthy things or more lower dividend yielding things in the index, which might give you better capital growth. And I also have a little spreadsheet where I monitor the growth of the dividend. Right, so it's down a couple of percent nearly, and down again the year before it was as well, so that's a bit... Oh well. Okay, so there's the housekeeping done. Right, so, topic of the day is, wh where do I want to go? Um, Looking at my portfolio, it's very... I don't know. There's quite a lot in there. As I've mentioned before, I don't want to be holding individual companies, really. Although I'm struggling to pull the trigger on selling them. So at some point, I want to get rid of those. Some of these... I don't know, I just, I'd just i quite like to simplify the portfolio. The other thing is, at the moment, I'm 68% UK, 32% global. Although that's just listed UK, because obviously I've mentioned before, lots of these... They're all UK listed companies in the City of London, for example, but actually a lot of their income comes from abroad anyway. But UK listed 68, global 32%. And also, uh, what I've considered like growthy investments, 33%, dividendy, 67%. Um, so, what's, apart, apart from choosing Woodford and Barclays and Royal Bank of Scotland, like, you know, my horrifically bad investments. Apart from that, the main thing that's made me underperform for the past couple of years is, is this percentages, these percentages here. Now, you could say, oh, well, maybe it's too late, maybe, this, maybe you should just stick where you are because maybe it'll turn around, maybe the dividendy ones will do better in total performance in the next five years, who knows? But then, I don't know, it's, it's hard to say, but maybe 33% in growth is a bit too low. In like 
the, the likes of Fundsmith, Scottish Mortgage, my momentum strategy. Maybe that's a bit too low, AAS, Asian Asia Focus. Um, so what I've got here is my kind of thoughts about what I might do if it was if I was starting afresh. If I just had the 334 grand in cash right now, what would I do if I started fresh? And I've got three different ideas of what that might be. So the first one is just to go a bit growthier, and all of them are severely reducing the number of holdings as well. So what I've got here is my some of the, some of the, all of the holdings I own already. My favourite investment trusts: City of London, Lowland, Small, Backrock, Smaller, Finsbury, Murray International. So the income ones. I don't know why that's lower down. I think it's just the way I typed it. So 11% in all of these favourite ones, and here's it. So this one here would be a would be a change. I've not I don't hold Henderson International Income yet, um, but it's it's like a slightly gr it's a it, it's a, well it's 3.5% five five percent dividend yield. It's a bit more. So it's international like Murray International is, but it's a bit less focused on the valuation or or the dividend yield valuation anyway. So it's a bit different to Murray International, but it's also globally and dividend focused. Just a different, you know, looking for lower dividends perhaps that put, put higher quality companies. Um, so it's going a bit growthier, but um, also a bit more international because to get this holding up, it would be selling UK things mostly, I would imagine. Because as you can see here, this portfolio would be only 53% UK listed compared to 68%. That I currently hold, um, and also it would be a lot more kind of growthier, 47% compared to 33% at the moment. Um, but obviously, <laughs> that obviously that reduces the dividends. So at the moment, I get about 11, 12 grand nearly from dividends, and I probably have to sell about two grand's worth of the growthy stuff f to live off. So this plan would mean, actually, no, about one grand's worth of the growthy stuff because my my LISA, that LISA video I did, earns me about £950 a year if you take off the cost of, well, it's more more like a grand, really. But as you can see in this example, it, the dividend yield is lower, 2.93% overall compared to my 3.35%. Not a massive di uh, not a massive difference, although actually that ex this includes cash here, so it's a bit of a bit misleading anyway. Um... So it yield about 2.93. My LISA kind of switcheroo thing that I do earns me about 950. And then, so that would mean selling about 0.98%. So 3,275 quid to live off each year to give me the grand total of 14 grand, which is a yield of 4.191. Slightly above the 4% rule, isn't it? Um, so, yeah. But the, but the thing is, that 14 grand it includes probably two grand of that is th like big ticket items that you only buy maybe every five years or every ten years, even who knows, like cars and stuff. So I wouldn't need to probably every year sell all of this. I could, um, in a downturn, I could not sell it for a couple of years and wait for the uptick because you know I, I wouldn't be kind of buying a car every year, would I? I'd be saving up a couple of grand each year for buying the car once every five, seven, ten years. Um, so that's the kind of growthier possible plan. And then this other plan is um, get myself a, a good high amount. Well, having said that, it's not that much more. What is it? So this is the dividend level, about three grand higher. But the theory of this one was to get a good level of the dividends that are with investment trusts that are, that are income focused so even in the downturns there's a good chance that they will still pay at least the same amount as the years before you know i've talked about the long long records of having dividends um because what this one gives me the the first one isn't it has a, a lower percentage in investment trusts whereas this plan here with income investment trust plus a few trackers, gives me a solid 9,263 in income, which is not guaranteed, but it's got the advantages of the investment trust that I went through in previous 
videos of having a stable level of dividends. So 9,263 compared to, if I add up all of the um, investment trust income from this one, is 8,000, not that much more to be honest is it? Not that much more at all to be honest. I think, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I've misjudged that. I don't know. But the idea of this portfolio is all in all the income stuff is investment trusts and the rest is uh, momentum and a worldwide tracker. So as you can see, the biggest proportion is 29% in uh, the world tracker, which has a decent yield, but not a massive one. So I've kind of foregone the really low yielding things like Fundsmith and Scottish Mortgage. Um, so as you can see the numbers there, there's a bit less selling, um, a bit more dividend, but a bigger portion of the dividend is kind of more stable or it feels more stable at least. And then the complete, and then the, this one is a complete tracker fund. Uh, I'm always thinking about this. Do I need to stop thinking that I can beat the market? Or do I need to stop thinking that these managers can beat the market? Because even if, because for, for every Scottish mortgage and Fundsmith, which has done really well over the past 10 years, there's going to be a Woodford or a, or a Lowland over the past few years in terms of capital. Um, so should I just stop trying to beat the market? Um, should I just go completely with trackers? So this little idea is, Quite a low UK, um, quite low in terms of UK, 28%. But you know, I can I can always fiddle with these percentages. I can always go 15, 15, 48. You know, mess around with it. 30% UK. Now there we go. Let's stick, stay with that. And then mainly a world tracker. So 48% in a developed world tracker, 15% in emerging markets. And I've kept the momentum, just because it's fun. And it's been doing very well at the moment. So that that's the only one that stays in all scenarios. But obviously that requires a lot more selling, you know. So it's, it's relying a lot more on capital appreciation. The dividend's quite low. And none of these dividends are guaranteed in any way. Even if the, even if the indexes do well because of growth stocks, my, div, you know, my dividends would be going down. What I mean is, it doesn't. It's agnostic. It doesn't care whether it goes for a dividend stock or a growth stock. It just buys whatever is in the market, is in the index. So it's not guaranteed. This would fluctuate a lot more the income from the portfolio, and so because of that, the amount I have to sell each year would fluctuate a lot more. So they're the three kind of plans that I could go for. At the moment, I'm thinking I'll stick with this one. It's just, it's less work to get to, and actually I probably won't even get to it very quickly, but what I have in my mind is every time I make a move, every time I make a, a switch of portfolio in the portfolio, it's going to be with a mind to getting towards that, and I will probably creep towards that very slowly, to be honest. Um, so the first change I'm going to make is, I'm going to dip my toe into Henderson International Income. I'm a bit scared of jumping into trackers at the moment. I feel like going for income that's more secure. And the one I'm going to sell, the timing of it, God knows, is Marlborough Multicap. I've mentioned it before. Um, I just feel like now we've had a bit of a Brexit bounce. Um, to be honest, I don't know what it's going to be. I could do it this week. I could do it in a couple of months' time. Who knows? But now, now we're starting to get the Brexit bounce. This one might be recovering relative to Henderson International. So at some point, I'm going to probably sell this one and put all of that money into Henderson International. And I've got a good, I've got, I've got uh, my ISA allowance as well, so multi, Marlborough Multicap is outside of the ISA at the moment. So I can sell it outside of the ISA, and I can, I've got about six grand in the ISA in cash, and I've got 11 grand's worth that I can contribute before April next year. So I can switch, that can go from being outside the ISA to inside the ISA. So anything that happens with Henderson International income will be um, in the uh, tax sheltered, which is good. Oh, so the, so the other thing I haven't mentioned is uh, Merchants Trust. So this is just a, 
quite a high dividend paying investment trust, UK focused. Um, basically, I just need something to replace Woodford with. When I eventually get the money from Woodford, it's going to come in dribs and drabs. But I need to put that money in somewhere. And I want to keep it UK focused. And obviously, because, it, because it's done so badly, Woodford, on the capital appreciation front, the dividend, or the projected dividend yield, which I never get with Woodford, I never get that. But that's what I need to replace it with. I'm, I'm accounting for 1,576, so I need something that yields high to replace it with. It's a bad way of making decisions, really. But uh, currently, currently on today's prices, um, merchants yield about 5%, so... It somewhat keeps my income from reducing too much of a replace the Woodford money with merchants. But obviously the price you pay, that's quite a high dividend yield, isn't it? But the price you pay is, it's not blown the lights out with um, the dividend increases recently. So 2%, 2%, see very low percentages, and then 4.84%. Um, I think very recently it's it's managed to pay off a lot of its debt to so the gearing that it had. A apparently a big chunk of the gearing it had was very old gearing and was taken out when um, when interest rates were much higher. And I think a big chunk of that has been paid off recently. You know, the, the terms of the loan came to an end and so it could refinance what was at a high interest rate is refinanced at a, at a low rate. So that explains why... The last year's dividend increase of 4.84% was much higher than these ones. Anyway, there's my uh, plans. How long have I been going for? Not as bad as I expected. I felt like I'd rambled on for ages. Alright, so uh, see you next time. Have fun.